G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an awesome suite of scripts by SETI Astro. He's done some amazing work and almost one clicked uh, a lot of the, the processing uh, that's, that, that we do in our day-to-day -day processing. Um, I thought I'd introduce some of them, not all of them, in a way that kind of shows a nice workflow for beginning narrowband images. Um, although some of the scripts are so amazing, I'll be utilizing them all the time um, in, in my everyday processing. Uh, if this is the kind of content that you like, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really does help the channel gain some exposure. Um, with that said, let's jump across to PixInsight. So grab yourself a coffee and we can start looking at these awesome scripts. So the first thing we have to do is obviously install his scripts. And to do that, the easiest way is to put his repository into our repository so that we can automatically update whenever he puts uh, new scripts in or updates his scripts. Um, and you can see that on his website here, cityastro.com. Uh, so we grab the repository link and we go up here to resources, updates, manage repositories, and we click on add and we copy that URL into this box here, click OK. Obviously here it's saying, I've got to put a URL in, you would have put one in. Um, and then we click on OK again, and the repository's there, okay? Now we need to actually grab that repository information and grab the scripts. So we go back up to resources, updates, check for updates. Um, when you click on that, it will update anything PixInsight related, including finding those new scripts for you. Um, and once it's finished, you will have to shut down PixInsight and go through the update process. Okay, once you've done that though, up here in the scripts menu, you'll see there's a new section called SETI Astro with all his scripts in it, uh, which is pretty awesome. We won't go through all of them today. We'll just go through a selection of them that I think are very useful for beginning and not so beginning astro photographers, uh, narrowband astro photographers. So I've got some images ready to go of the Statue of Liberty Nebula and the Southern Tadpoles because I had them open uh, already. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is utilize his automatic DBE script. Uh, so one of the first things we want to do, obviously, is remove any uh, light pollution or anything like that that's, that's in our images. Um, and DBE is by far still the most powerful tool to do that. But it takes a lot of time to carefully and meticulously put points around your image in the appropriate spots, um, test and retest until you've got it working. Tools like Graxbird are awesome, but they have limitations and they can often impact the structure of your image. Um, so if we go to script, SETI Astro, we'll open up automatic DBE, okay? Now, as it says, it says script to remove the gradient in an image. This utilizes gradient descent to define DBE points automatically. So there's that time-saving uh, component to you. It's automatically gonna choose where to put the points around your image. It's automatically gonna calculate your sample radius and your smoothing for you. Um, and basically it's, a, it's a, almost a one-click uh, function in many senses. Um, so this number 50 is representing how many points it's going to put around the image, and it's going to decide where to put those. You can change that, make it bigger, make it less if you only want a few points. The other thing SETI does say in his videos is that there are 12 points automatically placed around the periphery. So in fact, this isn't six, uh, 50, it's, it's 62 points. But you can, again, you can play with that and, and adjust it if you'd like. I'm just going to run with the defaults today. Uh, what we can do that's awesome, though, is we can click on this user-defined exclusion area and it'll bring up a preview of our image, STF stretched, if you haven't already done it. Um, and you can choose regions that you don't want to be included. You, you don't want to actually put sample points there. So if you've got a piece of dark nebula, such as here, then you can just click shift or hold shift, sorry, and, and click your left mouse button and drag and, and that will produce this red window. Uh, and no points will be placed in there, okay? Uh, it tells you over here, if you ever forget, shift and click and drag, and you can make multiple areas. 
So it is particularly useful for for dark nebula that that are perhaps actually darker than your background, and you you don't want them included. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to have to remember to do that each time for these little regions here. And on some of the images, they're quite hard to see, but kind of just above the statue here is where I'm going to place this little box to exclude that area. The other thing I'm going to do, and I don't necessarily recommend you do it, is click on this replace target image. Um, that way I can keep it called HA and O3 and S2, which won't muck things up for me later. Um, but perhaps you don't want that clicked so that you can compare your two images, okay? You can choose to show or hide the gradient that's extracted, just like normal ABA and DBA as well. I'm gonna keep it so we can have a quick look at it, okay? But I am gonna click on that replace target image. So I'll run this for HA and then I'll kind of fast forward through it for O3 and S2 because it's kind of the same thing uh, two more times. But I'm doing this in real time just so you can see how quick and, and painless it is. All right, so here is the gradient and it's beautifully smooth. Um, and what you're always trying to look for is, is, is there any obvious structure in this? And, and Seti's got a brilliant video where he, where he goes through this script in detail. Um, but that looks nice and smooth, okay? So it's done its job. As I said, I'll fast forward through the O3 and S2 and, and get to the next step quicker. All right, so how awesome was that? Nice and quick. It takes the pain out of putting all those points in, uh, which is pretty awesome. So now I've got three images with the, the gradients extracted. The next thing I tend to do is go through Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with that in real time. I'll just fast forward through it. Um, and if you don't have those scripts, then it's something you're not going to, to necessarily utilize anyway. All right, so with that all out of the way, the next thing we need to do is stretch our images. Now, if you've been watching this channel enough, you know I love GHS and I work with GHS all the time, but SETI's come up with a kind of one-click stretch method that does a pretty damn good job, um, and it's called statistical stretch. So if I open that up, uh, it's it's got a few different options. Um, we can choose, obviously, which image. So let's work with HA first, and it'll show you what the stretch is going to look like. It has a target median, and what that means is that's where kind of where the hump of the histogram is going to sit after the stretch, um, and the 0.25 is kind of where we often would like it to sit. The other thing that you can do is um, do a curves boost afterwards. Uh, I'm not going to do that for these images, um, just for this video, uh, but SETI goes through that in detail in, in his uh, video on his stretch our script, so you can you can look through that if you'd like to see what what that actually does. Um, and you literally just click on execute. And if I do that, it's nice and quick. The other thing that it does, which is awesome, is it disables the STF afterwards. If you've ever done a histogram stretch, then you'll know that it often goes white afterwards uh, because the STF is still applied. So that's a nice little addition to the script, which I thought was pretty thoughtful. Uh, then you go choose your other images. Again, it shows your preview of what it's going to look like. Click on execute. It's such a quick little process here. And like I said, it does a pretty damn good job of stretching your images uh, quite nicely. Um, and for a beginner, this is just amazing. It's done. Those images are stretched now. All three of them. Okay. So now we can obviously do the same thing for stars. And there's two ways we can go about this. Um, the first is um, just called star stretch, and it's very similar to statistical stretch. It has a few options, how much you'd like to stretch the stars, and if it's color, how much you'd like to boost the color. And in fact, in the background, um, it, it, it's doing very similar work to the statistical stretch. So you can choose your different star options. If you'd like to see a preview on this one of what that looks like, um, You've got to click on show preview first, obviously. Um, and, and then you can refresh the preview as you move these these around. Uh, but again, it, it does a pretty decent job uh, just on the default. So we'll, we'll go through and do that for each of, of these. So there's HA, reopen the script. 
So this one's not quite like statistical stretch where it stays open afterwards because um, it's it's making the assumption you, you're just doing this on one set of stars, a, a colour set of images, say. Um, so the fact it closes isn't a big deal. Um, there's O3. And which one haven't I done? I think it's S2. And there we go. So now we've gone through and we've processed our HA, O3, and our S2 stars. Um, and now everything's ready to combine. Let's say at this point we wanted to come up with our color image. Then um, if, if this was me, I'd probably open up my 4X palette utility script and run all this through. Um, but this isn't a Polyman Astro script video. This is a SETI Astro video. Um, so let's go through... Um, the other option of, of his. Um, so I'm going to undo these stretches. So th these would be great if you were going to be combining the images in your own palette, in your own way. But if you wanted just one color set of stars, again, one click, then the other script that you could use is his narrowband to RGB star combination. So we'll use this one instead, um, rather than going through, say, the Forex the palette utility. So you do the same thing here, you, you, you choose your three images, HA stars, O3 stars, and S2 stars. And what this is going to do in the background is um, the 4X palette on the stars, uh, just like my script kind of does. But the advantage of this script, you can apply that star stretch to the images, and so it'll produce one color image with the stars already stretched nicely. Um, if we click on execute now, we have now color stars, okay, which is awesome. Uh, I'm actually going to rename this 4x stars, just like it comes out in my script. Um, so they're ready to go. So as I said, you could run individually with the star stretch on these if you were going to put them into um, your own kind of palette or chuck them into my 4x palette utility, then you would stretch these individually. Um, or you could run through his script and, and just apply uh, these into my script, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're, we're basically at the point now where the image is stretched, the stars are stretched, we can combine things together. Um, and when we do so, if, if, if I ran 4X Palette Utility, it would produce a nice color image. Um, I've also got a fun little thing running in the background here on something I'm testing out. Um, there we go. So it's not quite ready for production yet, but it's similar to Forex Palette um, utility, uh, but producing a slightly different palette. Um, so for a statistical stretch, rather than going through GHS, that that's not a bad uh, little go, right? So what we might do is um, duplicate this image and, and um, separate the two kind of nebula out so we can see them a little bit better. So maybe we'll do, say, there as, as that one. And rotate it. I always, always invariably rotate these the wrong way around. Um, well, today I've got it right. Look at that. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at the tadpoles individually as well, just so we can see them um, with our kind of one, one click kind of processing that we've been doing which is, it's not, it's not bad, right? So there's, a, there's kind of the two different regions isolated out. Um, now, obviously, as I said, with GHS, you could be working on the contrast a lot more um, and produce something maybe a little bit more punchy, but for, for one click kind of options, this is amazing. Um, you get some pretty cool images popping out just from, running a few scripts and, and executing them. So great job by, by SETI Astro uh, on these scripts. As I said, I haven't gone through all of them. This is just kind of a, a nice little workflow that you can run through um, just to, to, to nice and quickly produce a pretty decent image. 
So hopefully you got something out of that um, and, and it looks worthwhile. Again, if you're interested in what he is doing, then check the description down below with a link to both his website and to his YouTube channel. So you can see all the cool scripts that he's doing and, and he goes through in a lot more detail how to use them and what all the individual sliders and, and options do. Um, so do, do take some time to, to check out his website. Anyway, that'll kind of wrap up this video. So thanks for watching um, and I'll see you in the next one.